Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, for Destroying the Meta, I'm going to be talking about how to beat the hands because a lot of people still have uh, trouble beating these hands. Let me get some of right? Now, um, it, it can be tricky. But at the same time, it's relatively easy if you break down exactly what they do and how you could get rid of them. Let's start off by reading off Firehand. Firehand is a level 4, obviously a fire type monster. Um, but it's obviously also a pyro monster with 1600 attack with 1000 defense. Its effect reads, when this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card, either by battle or by card effect, and sent to your graveyard, you can target one monster they control destroy that target then you can special summon one ice hand from your deck now let's go on to ice hand ice hand is uh obviously uh, aqua water there's no ice archetype level 4 1400 attack 1600 defense and its effect reads when this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card effect or by opponent's card either by battle or by card effect sent to your graveyard you can target one spell or trap card they control destroy that target then you can special summon one fire at fire hand from your deck now when you read these effects you can obviously see two things the first thing is that cards like effect veiler skill drain and breakthrough skill cannot stop them because they activate in the graveyard so with that being said people stop effect veiling fire and ice hands on the field it doesn't really work that way um if Effect Veiler works against monsters that activate and resolve on the field, Ice Hand activates and resolves on in the graveyard because all cards activate and resolve in the same spot. Um, next, I think the biggest thing that we can take out from card text is the card says, when, blah, 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 you can. So that means there's a possibility for Fire and Ice Hand to miss timing. All you have to do is force it to happen. The next thing is that you can read from Fire and Ice Hand uh, it says you can target one spell and trap card they control destroy that target then you can special summon one fire hand from your deck so with that being taken into consideration if they can't destroy their target the deck can't oh i'm sorry man this has been tiring today if they can't destroy their target then they can't special summon from the deck that's going to be dire to beating the hands they have that many more weaknesses um that coupled on with their weak attack we should easily be able to go through a couple cards that'll stop them just kind of like this one maystroke now maystroke isn't ideal for stopping both hands it's ideal for stopping fire hand if maystroke just happens to be your only monster in the field it's a rank 4 etsy it's not that hard to go into um and it destroys fire hand as a result of battle fire hand can target maystroke but maystroke you'll just detach one material since fire hand did not destroy its intended target it can't special summon ice hand from the deck thus stopping the fire ice hand loop um from destroying your advantage i think that may stroke is a pretty solid card it's 1800 attack you know it, it has a lot of things going for it um that's and it flipped monsters face down it, it's just a really versatile card and when the first thing that came to mind when i very first seen fire and ice hands was may stroke for the answer of the fire hands couldn't really think of an answer to fire hand except for i don't know don't play nine million back row i mean that's just how the game would go um next is a card that's been gaining popularity i'm glad i got them when they were cheap it's ifgishki mural geist now ifgishki mural geist says after damage calculation if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle you can detach one material from this card shuffle or destroy monsters to the deck instead of sending it to the graveyard that's really good People don't understand how good that is. The reason why Mural Geist is so good is because after damage calculation, uh, the cards typically would go to graveyard, but instead, Mural Geist puts it to the deck. If you read Fire and Ice Hand, they both have to be sent into the graveyard. So, with that being said, if they're not sent to the graveyard, then Mural Geist are, um, if they're not sent to the graveyard, they cannot activate their effects. Not only that, Mural Geist has a 2100 body, practically capable of getting rid of any monster that is level 4 and lower. So, if even if you are playing Gear Gears and you feel that they have Fire and Ice Hand, you summon Mural Geist and you run over that Gear Gear armor. Um, and you just happen, if you so happen to hit uh, Fire and Ice Hand, well, 
congratulations, now you can put it to the top of your deck. It's one of the perfect opening starter monsters to come off with, just because of its strong attack and its ability to put cards back to the top of the deck, and it's pretty versatile. It doesn't just have to stop Fire and Ice Hand, it can stop Battle Searchers, it can stop so many Graveyard Reliant cards, and all it have to do is destroy it by battle. Pretty good. Next, if you can't do, if you guys don't have any of these utility exceeds, um, or I'm sorry, actually, let's go to the last one, Abyss Dweller, who's known for ruining people's days. Um, not only can Abyss Dweller ruin Fire and Ice Hand, but it is an amazing out to Mermels, it is an amazing out to Artifacts, it's an amazing out to Back Row, I'm sorry, Graveyard Reliant decks. It just completely stops them in their tracks. And you can really appreciate Abyss Dweller for that. The only problem that Abyss Dweller does have that Mero Geist, you know, doesn't, is Abyss, oops, Abyss Dweller's low attack. It has 1700 attack. Um, it's still a pretty good card, though. I exited out of it, so you guys are going to have to get over it. Um, the la the next thing, if you don't have that extra deck of utility to get over the monsters, if you don't have something to prevent itself from destruction, if you don't have Mural Geist or Can't Make Dweller, um, you can go through it the old-fashioned way, and it's called Forcing the Monster to Miss Timing. Um, right here, I have Mystical Space Typhoon. Probably one of, like I said, one of the most versatile cards in the game. Not the best, but still one of the most versatile. And then I have Mirror Force. Now, normally, Mirror Force would trigger your Fire and Ice Hand. So if I Mirror Force my opponent's Fire or Ice Hand, they'll still be able to destroy a card and then Special Summon. So Mirror Force is ultimately a neck. But let's say if my opponent is attacking with Fire Hand and I activate Mystical Space Typhoon. He has no response. So to the response, I chain Mirror Force. Um, if you guys take, look back at what uh, Ice Hand says, both Fire and Ice Hand, they both say when you can. So that means they have to be the last thing that happens. Mystical Space Typhoon, or I'm sorry, Mirror Force will destroy all of his monsters on the field, putting the monsters into the graveyard. But Mystical Space Typhoon still has not resolved, destroying an opponent's back row. At that given time, the Fire and Ice Hands cannot activate their effects because the last thing that happened was Mystical Space Typhoon's destruction. That is an effective way to get over the Fire and Ice Hands if you can't do it any other way. I call it the ghetto effect. I don't know what else to call it, guys. If you can activate two cards, um, one that destroys the the Fire and Ice Hands is Chainlink 2, and then the other one to do any random thing. It doesn't have to be something amazing. It just has to be something that will resolve after the card is being destroyed. Then you're completely in the care clear. You don't have to worry about Fire and Ice Hands anymore. And then that I mean I think that's a pretty effective way if you have no other ways to get rid of it. Um, I, like I said, it's the ghetto way to do it. It's the ghetto effect way, but it works half the time and the opponents don't see it coming when they attack and you go mystical space cycle um a lot of not good players will be like okay i'm not gonna do anything i'm not gonna compose my hand oh. just a yanni video today are we um the last card would be monster cards that get rid of fire and ice hands without sending them to the graveyard um such as dimensional prison dimensional prison removed from plays the attacking monster preventing both fire and ice hand from going to the graveyard and this is why i feel dimensional prison is superior to mirror force just because it removes threats and not destroy them destroys them there are so many cards in the game that are so reliant on being destroyed so mirror force is a little obsolete but we'll talk about that later dimensional prison effectively gets rid of the trap uh, of the monster without it without you ever seeing again without the dragon ruler players ever being able to abuse it without the person ever be able to pot a dichotomy it without the person ever being able to die gusto emerald it, it can permanently get rid of the threat same thing can be said for Caius, the shadow monarch and a host of other cards well i think we broke down how to effectively get rid of the fire and ice hands um, unless you can destroy it without having a monster i mean unless you can destroy fire hand without having a monster destroying ice hand without having a back row i think that these are some effective ways to get rid of them don't forget about macro soul drain and defy they just seem to ruin everybody's day no matter what deck you tend to play but thank you guys for watching another segment of the cali effect please like comment subscribe but most of all enjoy